Okay, my dad asked me this question over the weekend. He wanted to create a gradial or a gradiated blur on image where he wanted to, to sort of blur back the background a little bit but didn't want to do it just with a flat sort of blur. I think he was looking at sort of the lens effect that you get. Okay, what we'll do is we start out with the layers palette up and we're going to create a duplicate of this background layer. You can either do that by going to the fly out menu and select, select the duplicate layer. That will, as you can see, create a background copy. I'm just going to delete that. Or you can go to the layer menu at the top and again select the duplicate layer from there or use the layer via copy. There's a shortcut there, Apple or Control J if you're on a PC, or Command J as it's often called on the Mac. If you want to automatically name your layer or get the, the new layer dialog box up, at the Alt or Option key um, um, on your keyboard when you're selecting this command. It also works if you use the this command in, con in conjunction with the Alt or Option key. It will give you the new layer dialog box and we can now name this the blurred layer. Click OK. There it is. Now let's blur it. Go to the filter menu. Using one of the blur filters, I'm just using the Gaussian blur. You can also create a similar effect as, as what I'm going to do with the lens blur filter, especially if you add a layer mask first, but I'll show you how to work on that layer mask in a sec. So let's do the Gaussian blur. Let's have a look up and down. Gives us a good preview of what we're doing. If you um, hit the arrow up or down on your keyboard, it will go up in points one of pixel increments. If you add the shift key, it will go up a little bit quicker. We'll just sort of use that shortcut to see the effect. I'm going to exaggerate this a fair bit so that you can really see this thing on the, on the movie. You probably wouldn't do this much bl blurring of your image. Okay. Let's get done. We're going to add a layer mask to that blur because what we want to do with that layer mask is sort of fade some of the blur effect away by, by revealing the background component again. Um, when you just click the add layer mask button at the bottom of the layers palette, it will just reveal the entire image. So everything that's in this particular layer is still revealed. If I now were to paint with black paint, I'll just increase my brush size using the right rectangular or square bracket. Then you can see that it starts to punch a hole in things. If I were to reveal that background again, you'll see that's in focus again. So this is sort of the effect that I want to, this is sort of the trick that I want to really apply. Um, I'm going to use a gradient that gradually goes from black down the bottom here to white up the top. So the image gradually goes out of focus. And you can also do this with radial gradients if you want to create some nice visual effects. So here's the gradient tool. Um, from the gradient presets pop up, I'm going to select this third gradient here that is a default black to white, so I know for sure that these colors are black and white. Otherwise, you can use this first one here, which runs from foreground to background color, but you need to make sure that at the bottom of your toolbox, you've got black and white selected as your foreground background colors. If you're not quite sure of that, just hit the letter D on the keyboard to reset these to black and white. But I'm going to use this one here. I'm going to go from the bottom here and click and drag with that gradient tool to set the distance of that gradient. So where I, I originally start, it will start with black and anything preceding that will also be black and will gradually go up to white. You can now see that that part of that background is coming through and part of this is all blurred, but it sort of is a gradual blur. And you notice there's a few of these um, floral bits and pieces that are still out of focus because they are not yet hidden by the mask. So what I'm going to do is grab that paintbrush again. I've just hit the D on the keyboard to make sure that my foreground color is black. And I'm just going to paint over that, make the brush a little bit smaller using the right square bracket. I'm using the soft touch brush, which I'm um, achieving by holding on shift key and hitting the left square bracket. So that's how you change your hardness and your softness of your brush. Use the right square bracket if you want to make the brush a harder brush. I'm just painting over some of these areas that I want to you know, put back into focus that really should be part of this foreground component. I 
you might want to do this with a little bit more precision by zooming in and out. The good thing though is because you're working on a layer mask, if you go overboard a little bit, um, you can always sort of reapply that gradient and, and block things out a little bit more again with your um, with your tools. It's a great little effect. So here you go there. That's the question you asked, and here's your answer. This is Carrie Jensen signing off.